we're given the function f of x comma y over the boundary given by x and y greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to three. Which means this is the bounded region for the function f of x comma y defined as the region D. Number one, we're asked to find the critical point of f restricted to the boundary of D, not at a corner point. And then number two, we want to determine the absolute extrema of f of x comma y over the bounded region. To answer both questions, we will go through the process of finding the absolute extrema of a function of two variables on a bounded region. In this process, we'll be able to answer number one. Step one, we find the critical points that lie in the bounded region and determine the function values at these points. The critical points occur where the first order partials both equal zero or where they're undefined, which means we begin by determining the first order partial derivatives. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to x, treating the variable y as a constant, which gives us 2x minus one times y or minus y plus zero minus three plus zero. So we have minus three, we set this equal to zero for the first equation, and now to find the partial of f with respect to y, we differentiate f with respect to y treating the variable x as a constant. This gives us zero minus x times one, or negative x, plus two y minus zero plus three. Set this equal to zero, and solve this as a system of equations. Let's use elimination and eliminate the y terms by multiplying the first equation by two and leaving the second equation the same. This gives us four x minus two y minus six equals zero. Second equation stays the same. And now we add the equations together. This gives us three x plus zero minus three equals zero. Solving for x, we add three, divide by three, x equals one. So for the critical point, we know the x-coordinate is equal to one. We still need to find the y-coordinate. To find the y-coordinate, we will substitute one for x in the first equation. Doing this, we have two times one, or two, minus y, minus three equals zero. Solving for y, add y to both sides. Simplify the left side. We have y equals negative one. We need to be careful here, though, because notice how the point one comma negative one would be down here which is not in the bounded region. Therefore, we do not consider this point when determining the absolute extrema. It's also not the answer for number one. So now we move on to step two. For step two, we find the extrema of the function on the boundary using calculus one techniques. Let's begin doing this on the next slide. Notice how this segment is on the line y equals zero. This segment is on the line y equals three. This segment is on the line x equals zero, and this segment is on the line x equals three. Let's first consider the boundary x equals zero. We're only concerned about the boundary x equals zero when y is on the closed interval from zero to three. And when x equals zero, the function f of x comma y is really f of zero comma y, which is going to be a function of y, let's call it g of y, and now we substitute zero for x in f of x comma y, which gives us zero minus zero plus y squared minus zero plus three y. And now we need to find the absolute extrema of g of y on the closed interval from zero to three. We begin by determining the critical numbers, which is where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. g prime of y is equal to two y plus three. Set this equal to zero and solve. Add three divided by two, we have y equals negative three halves. But notice how this y value is not in this closed interval, and therefore we do not use it to determine the absolute extrema of g over this closed interval. So we'll say not on boundary. But we still need to find the function values at the endpoints of y equals zero and y equals three. 
So we need to find g of zero and g of three. But remember, g of zero is the same function value as f of zero comma zero, and g of three is the same function value as f of zero comma three. To find g of zero, we substitute zero in g of y, which gives us zero squared plus three times zero, or zero. And g of three is equal to three squared plus three times three, which is equal to 18. So we just considered this boundary, which included the endpoints. And now let's work on the boundary x equals three, when y is on the closed interval from zero to three. So for x equals three, when y is on the closed interval from zero to three, f of x comma y is really f of three comma y, which is a function of y, we'll call it g of y again. We substitute three for x in our function, which gives us three squared or nine, minus three times y or minus three y, plus y squared, minus three times three or minus nine, plus three y. Simplifying g of y, notice how the, the y terms simplify out, and sort of the constants, g of y is now just y squared. We need to find the absolute extrema of g of y over the closed interval from zero to three. g prime of y is equal to two y, set this equal to zero, and we have y equals zero as a critical number. But notice how y equals zero is also an endpoint. We need to find the function values g of zero and g of three. But now notice how g of zero is the same function value as f of three comma zero. So we substitute zero into g of y for y, which gives us zero squared or zero. g of three is the same function value as f of three comma three, which is equal to three squared, which equals nine. So now we found the extrema on this boundary, again, including the endpoints. Notice how we've already determined the function values on the four endpoints, and therefore, for the boundary y equals three and y equals zero, we only have to find the function values at the critical numbers. Let's finish this on the next slide. Now let's consider the function on the boundary y equals zero. And this is only when x is on the closed interval from zero to three. So along this boundary, our function f of x comma y is really f of x comma zero, which is a function of x, we'll call it g of x. To find this function, we substitute zero for y and f, which gives us x squared minus zero plus zero minus three x plus zero. g of x equals x squared minus three x. Find the critical numbers of g over this closed interval. g prime of x is equal to two x minus three. Set this equal to zero and solve. Add three, divide by two. X equals three halves is in this interval, and now we find the function value g of three halves. We don't have to find g of zero and g of three this time, because remember, we already found the function values at these endpoints. g of three halves is the same function value as f of three halves comma zero, which is equal to three halves squared minus three times three halves, which is equal to nine fourths minus nine halves, which equals negative nine fourths. And finally, the last boundary is y equals three. And again, we've already found the function values at the endpoints. So for y equals three, when x is on the closed interval from zero to three, our function is really f of x comma three, which is a function of x. To find g of x, we substitute three for y in f of x comma y, which gives us x squared minus x times three or minus three x, plus three squared or plus nine, minus three x, plus three times three or plus nine. So g of x, is equal to x squared minus six x plus 18. We need to find the extrema of g of x over this closed interval. First determine the critical numbers, which is where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. The derivative is two x minus six. So this equal to zero and solve. 
at 6 divided by 2, we have x equals 3. Notice x equals 3 is this endpoint here, which we already determined the function value when we considered the boundary x equals 3. And therefore, we're done for the last step. The greatest and least values found are the absolute max and the absolute min. We found the function value of 0, 18, 0, 9, and negative 9 fourths. Negative 9 fourths is the least function value we found. Negative 9 fourths is the absolute minimum of the function over this bounded region, which is where x equals 3 halves and y equals 0. Looking at the bounded region, that would be this point here in the xy plane, which notice is not a corner point, and therefore this is also the answer to number 1. So going back to the first slide, the absolute minimum is negative 9 fourths. And this came from the critical point 3 halves comma 0, which was on the boundary here, but not at a corner point. And then the absolute maximum is 18, which occurred at the point 0 comma 3. So 18 is the absolute maximum. Before we go, let's look at this graphically. f of x comma y is the blue surface, and the bounded region is defined by these green planes. Notice over this region, this is the highest point on the surface, where the z-coordinate is positive 18, and this occurs when x equals 0 and y equals 3. And this is the lowest point on the surface over the bounded region, which means the z-coordinate of this point is negative 9 fourths, and this occurs when x equals 3 halves and y equals 0. I hope you found this helpful.